Penrith host the Broncos Thursday, 8 p.m., 7 p.m. Queensland time. Bluebet Stadium, live on SEN with Joel Kane, Brett Kamali, and Spud Carroll. We all know the Panthers team news. We all know the Broncos team news. Only a slight, uh, I guess, big news out of the Panthers is Dane Laurie has been named at 14. Uh, Smithy, we've spoken about how the Broncos can win this one. How do the Panthers win this one? And also, how would you rate the Panthers' first two rounds of the season? Uh, well, look, I don't think they're up where they have been uh, previous seasons. I think they've been a little bit scratchy with their performances, but uh, but their players are starting to look like they're getting back on track. I thought Isaiah Yo particularly had the best game of his season so far. Um, again, you know, well, talking about some players that are under pressure, like it's only two rounds. Mm. So, you know, we don't want to sort of go off too early on, on performances and whatnot, but I thought he had a strong performance um, against Parramatta. Mate, that try that he set up, that kick. Oh, wow. Stop it. Oh, my has he, God. Has he, has he been given the license, do you reckon, from Ivan? Mate, give him his license, Ivan, please. Come <laughs> on. He's passed very with rarely, colours. Very rarely do the ruck players uh, get the kicking license, but, mate, he nailed it. I, 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 don't know, I don't know if I've ever seen a better drop punt in my life. It was pinpoint, and he's too humble, but... Surely you're layering up a training as a back rower, as a lock when you do something yeah. like that. Surely you layer up. Surely. Just move over, Nathan. Mate. I'll, I'll, just, I'll take, I'll take the, the last play options. Um, particularly, oh, mate, I've seen a couple of ordinary attempts eh, oh. in my time. None, none more so than, I, and I hope this man is listening, Brian Norrie. And I think we actually see, <laughs> I think we actually seen some replays of him uh, or of this particular attempted kick. Um, through the week, mate, it is the worst ever. <laughs> I think Coop, I think Cooper Coop's got the ball on the last tackle. He sort of got pressured. He had some kick pressure, so he decided to run, ran into a dead end, offloaded the ball, and went back to Brian Norrie. Brian's tried to do the big up and under, put a dirty old bomb up with the left boot, and mate, it was a clean miss, air swing. <laughs> Oh my! Oh, yeah, the boys! I tell you what, oh, he down. copped it. Yeah. He copped it. He copped it the next week or maybe the next month. But um, no, look back to this game. I think um, oh, mouth watering uh, matchup between these two footy sides. It, it's a shame that they're missing um, a couple of the big names. Broncos, of course, without Reynolds and and Payne Haas. Do we do we know the extent of those injuries? So Reynolds, I think, is a two to he, three he's a bit more serious, isn't yeah. It? Um, Payne Haas is precautionary, which I like from gotcha. the Broncos. Gotcha. Okay, so hopefully Payne Haas is maybe just a week, given its early rounds. Um, a little bit more serious situation for Adam Reynolds, but um, big game for both. Missing, as I said, missing a couple. Penrith look like they're they're starting to you know, find their groove a little bit, but so did the Broncos, mate, last week. Like their second half was was. Um, Great. I thought Selwyn Cobbo stood up, oh. as did Reese Walsh. Um, I thought Cobbo was very good. And Patrick Carrigan, mate. Like, Patrick Carrigan, he sort of went under the radar last week. It was very – it was like a tradesman-like performance. He finished the game with, I think, 36 tackles and 204 running metres. Mm. It didn't sort of seem as much as you usually did with – you know, he usually bends the line a bit more than what he did last week. But he, he just got through a mountain of work. So – those three guys really stood up for Penrith. Um, you know, we spoke earlier about Isaac Tungo and and how good a game he had. Parramatta took it to him. They tested him. Yeah. But they were able to stand up and, and really get a good win. Um, I think, I think playing at home and they're gonna they're gonna improve slightly again this week. Penrith um, and no Reynolds. I'm 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 going Penrith in this one, mate. Yeah, really tough challenge for the Broncos. I think a key for them. You know, the, their back five are just, they are relentless, the back five for Penrith. So if I'm i am the Broncos, I am doing similar-ish to what the Warriors did to the Storm last week where they kept kicking to Coates um, yes. so that he couldn't have that play two tackle. I'm doing everything I can to make sure To'o doesn't have that play two run. Uh, making sure, kicking the ball and tackling him as he catches it would be a big game plan for me with the Brisbane Broncos because the only way you're going to beat... Penrith if you can somehow negate that back five's running meters. Now, you're not going to negate all of it, but if you can quell like one of those players, um, that's a huge win. But look, my heart says Broncos, my head says Panthers. Uh, going to be yep. a very, very tough challenge. Just back to your Paddy Carrigan com- com- um, comment. And I hate to continue to be negative with the Rabbitohs, but 
that was really the difference. You know, you, you had a guy like Paddy Carrigan. Mm. Yes, okay, was he setting the world alight? No, he wasn't. But he was no. tucking the ball under. He was running yep. hard and straight and just getting a roll on. And that's mm. where the Rabbitohs really fell short last week of just keeping it simple through the middle and just tucking the ball hard and straight mm. and just getting through your sets. Yep. Um, now, let's get to the Warriors v. the Raiders. Uh, hooker Wade Egan named despite missing last week. Still no sign on injured duo Neokode and Charles Nickel Uh A sign as to when they'll return. Raiders, Whitehead returns from a layoff with a groin injury, which bumps Zach Hosking, who has arguably been at least top three players in the NRL oh, over the first two rounds. Good. Loss of Seb Chris to the concussion means Kotrick will turn. Uh, Albert Hoppawadi shifts to the wing. How have you rated the Raiders' season, Smithy? Uh, impressive. Mm. Yep, impressive start to the year for the Raiders. Uh, I know they took on West Tigers last week, which was a game that I think everyone expected them to win. But um, two from two from two, mate, in this competition is it's a good result. And you know, to be fair, I I didn't have them at that stage. I, I didn't I didn't really think that they were going to win against Newcastle in round one. But uh, this is their biggest test. Yeah. Um, a, a Warriors side, I think that will be. I reckon they'll be they'll be a little bit um, down on. Well, not down. I shouldn't say down, but they'll be very disappointed with the way that game finished on the weekend. They've had two results now where they were in strong positions to win their games. They're opening two games. They could very well be two and zero rather than zero and two. Yeah. Um, and sitting on top of the competition. So, um, look, this one they they really need to stand up. I think. Wade Egan being back is a huge boost for them. I think they're they're a completely different side um, when he's playing. Um, he just he just gets them nice and straight down the field. Yeah, that that that's that's his biggest strength is that when he gets out of dummy half, he gets his forwards running straight into the line. They run direct. They don't they don't have a lot of sideways movement. So he keeps the markers and the A defenders really honest. It doesn't matter what team they play against. He 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 seems to be able to. You know, create some space for his men on the outside, particularly Sean Johnson, because he holds up those middle defenders. Um, so they're a, a much stronger outfit. But the Raiders, um, they get some names back too, like Elliot White, Whitehead, and he, he's one of the one of the stronger back rowers in the competition. Um, and they will be full of confidence, yeah. full of confidence. Uh, t- you know, if the Warriors before the season started, and you looked around three. And it's no disrespect to the Raiders at all. But before the season started, you would have said, okay, Sharkies hopefully jag the win. Storm away. Okay, if we if we drop that one, we can kind of cop that. Now, the Raiders having been on top of the comp, it's it's gone from a game where they would expect to win to a degree to a game where it's like, wow, we're playing the form team, arguably the form mm-hmm. team of the comp, them and mainly Manly. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the problem the Warriors face now is that we can all sit here and say, Still looking great, you know. Yes, they lost the first two, but they're still a premiership threat. But it's, yep. it can only go for so long without a win to continue that's to right. tell yourself that. Eventually, you got to get that win. Well, that's right, mate. Yeah, like it's it's, th- and this is the time that needs to happen, right? If they go zero and three, all of a sudden, the blowtorch it gets a little bit hotter. Mm. Um, yeah, they start to a few little grumblings here and there. So, playing at home. Um, I think the form they've shown enough form right over the first two to suggest that they they're in the hunt again this year. Mm. They just need to find like finish off the games that, that where they get away to good starts. Um, they need to be able to ice those games. Now Roosters v the Rabbitohs. What a clash! Woo-hoo. I mean, <laughs> it's just mouth watering this clash and mm. the Rabbitohs with all the drama and everything going on. You know, you'd expect them to get up for this, but the Roosters, relatively good start to the year. You know, Manly red hot, and they got a win over the Broncos. Luke Keary is out, though. So Sandon Smith comes in uh, alongside Sam Walker. Sue Wong has dropped down to reserves. Nat Butcher joining the starting side. Kangaroos forward. Crichton set to play his first NRL game of the year off the bench. Killed it in New South Wales Cup. And Connor Watson yep. makes his long away to return, lining up in 14 jersey for his first NRL game <laughs> since the 20. 20- 22 qualifying final. Rabbitohs, Hawkins in for Ilias. White returns for suspension to partner Tass in the centres with Kenner dropping out. Davy, Davy Mowali and Host added to their forwards with Kepi going to the bench. Uh, just quickly, 
One mm. positive for the, the Rabbitohs is Moali's been outstanding for a, a young yes. forward in their first two games, in my opinion, especially their second game. He has been very strong. Mm. Uh, very strong for a side that is struggling and, and not playing anywhere near their best. Like when you look at their lineup, one to seventy on paper, like they're they're one of the best teams in the comp. Mm. And and you look at them each week and go, well, they sh- they're, they're winning more games than they lose, but they just haven't looked anywhere near where they should be at the moment. For the Roosters, um, they've had a couple. Of, well, they've had a couple of tough ones. They they took on. Manly last week, who you just mentioned, Kempi, um, one of the form teams of the competition. Many saying that they are the best team out of the first two weeks and looking very strong. Um, the one I'm looking at at the moment, I've circled a couple of names, Jack Wyden. Mm. I think this is one of the most anticipated returns of any player in the competition and, and the move that he's made too to the Rabbitohs, um, particularly where he's going to fit in. He's been slotted in in the centres. Uh, he'll play on that left edge and he's going to bring... What he will bring to this footy side is, I think, a bit of mongrel, um, a bit of intent, and a bit of urgency. That's the that's that's the type of player that Jack Whiten is, and that's the way he plays. You see him play at that you know, that style of footy at all different levels, and um, it's why you know when he was playing at the Raiders, he was a major focus of their team. He was a, he was the focal point of their footy side, and he really drove those those standards that I just spoke about in, in those areas. So I think him coming in, it may just give a little bit of a kickstart to a lot of those players around him because those things I spoke about there, the the intent and the urgency, I just haven't seen that from the Rabbits. Mm. I haven't seen it. Yeah. And, you know, like I, I, I called their game last week against the Broncos and at times where, you know, they needed someone to step up and, and, and do something and grab the game by the scruff and say, hey, boys, come with me. There was no one. Mm. There yeah. was no one. So maybe Jack Whiten is the man to do that. The other guy quickly, mate, is Connor Watson. Been out for a long time. Um, can't wait to see his return. Um, clearly off the bench as a utility. Spent a bit of time at nine. Maybe in the ruck as well. Um, he is a live wire. So this is a great matchup. Great matchup for me. What a game. What an incredible game. We're going to watch uh, Roosters versus Rabbitohs. Just a point on, on Jackie Whiten. A really good example of that is is, and I've spoken about it quite a bit, Last year, Warriors v Broncos, the game's in the balance, and they didn't necessarily have that star kind of outside back explosive player to really, you know, do something to change momentum. Then you fast forward, Melbourne Storm versus the Warriors, the game's in the balance, the Warriors need someone to stand up and just ring momentum back. Roger Torvashek has multiple big plays to get him back in the match, and it's a roundabout way of saying, you know, there genuinely are this. So there's there's good players, there's great players, then there's game changers, and there's very few of them in the NRL. And Jackie Wyden is a game changer type of player. So he really there is he's not only does he have pressure because he's coming to a new club and you know he's he's a big signing, he's marquee signing, but there's also pressure of not just changing the game, but changing their season trajectory. Like I know it's early in the year. But they need someone to stand up and say, boys, this is not the standard. This this is now the standard. And Jackie can be that player for the Rabbitohs, I think. Absolutely, mate. I think, um, as I said, he, it's the most anticipated move in, in a couple of years. And I think the Bunnies fans, they'll all be keen to see Jackie White and get out there uh, Friday night and, and see what he's got. And also what I hope Jackie White does is that it sends a message to Trell and Cody as well, you know, of... Okay, yeah, I understand, you know, Trell and, and Cody Walker, they are big superstars, but Jackie Whiten's a superstar of the game too. He's a Clive Churchill winner. He, you know, he's played some good origin games. He's played for his country. And so if he comes out and says, this is a standard, the competitor in, in Trell and Cody, they'll almost naturally react to that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm hoping that we see not only the best game from Jackie Whiten, but also from Cody Walker, also from Latrell Mitchell. Going to head to a break. After the break, the round two, round three preview continues. Fox Team News, Liam Knight coming into prop for Pulsar Famasili, Famasili, Famasili apologies, yes. who suffered a concussion against the Sharkies, uh, which I just want to say quickly, I understand you look at the scoreboard last week, but when you look at them losing their front rower first run of the game and the fact that they were in that game for most of it, I actually think there's a lot to like from that performance for, by the Doggies. 
Uh, I know it's hard to hear because you've lost both mm-hmm. games. But anyway, Adokar remains on the sideline as he continues to recover from a shoulder injury. Foran returns to the halves, making his first appearance of the season alongside Tanner Boyd. Joloff has been named to start at lock with Isaac Liu shifting to the bench. Campbell and Fafida remained sideline. Smithy, what do you reckon, mate? Well, um, this might be shock news to everyone, but I'm going Titans here. Going Titans? Yeah, I just think round one, extremely disappointing. I think, and I think Desi would have, he wouldn't have held back at all cool. in that review, in that review meeting. He would have given him a little famous Desi spray, I reckon. And then last week they had the week off to fix a few of the issues. Kieran Four and you know, being back, I think just steadies their ship a little bit. Um, a lot of experience there coming into the halves, um, just to just to help out Tanner Boyd steer this this Titan side around. The one thing with the doggies is just uh, like they, they they scored they scored one try. Well, they scored one try last week, um, which you know they're they're a side that on the up. There's they're some new faces, some young guys, and they're still learning. But they only scored the eight points as well against Parramatta. Mm. Um, so it was two tries in round one. One try round two. So it's just an issue for them at the moment where they're trying to find that try line. So looking at the looking at the two teams, just on paper, um, you know, I'm tipping Titans to be slightly too strong for the Doggies. And just quickly before we continue, uh, no, not one mention of Hargrave's 300th. Are you serious? You are correct, Paul. We forgot what an incredible achievement Massive. by Hargreaves in the front Massive. row. I mean... Well, yeah, play, like playing mate, playing three hundred. No matter where, no matter what position you're playing, it's it's a huge milestone, huge milestone. But for this guy, you know, to playing in the front row, it, it's it's the most physical position in the competition. You're running into brick walls. You're standing into blokes charging back off kickoffs, off dropouts, and all that sort of stuff. And for him to reach three hundred is massive. So, Jared, well done, mate, from the captain's run from Kempi and I and everyone at SEN. Congratulations. Have a big match. I know you will. Stay on the field, buddy. I know you get fired up for these ones against the Bunnies. I know you love this one. But, mate, <laughs> stay on the field in your 300th. Um, hope it's a memorable night for you and your family. And uh, go well. Yeah, I mean, and also, we're, talk- we're not talking about a stat padder front rower. We're talking about a no. down and dirty front rower doing oh. the tough stuff. Oh, he loves it. Oh, wow. So, yeah, incredible achievement. Now, back to the Bulldogs v. the Titans. Now, I was very let down by Titans round one only because, or well, two reasons. Obviously, mm. they didn't play as well as they did, but also I had such high hopes for them. I, I just like, I just yep. felt with this young forward pack, Desi has like all that kind of stuff. But yep. So I was going, I was heading into the next game, going, oh, I don't think they're anywhere close to where they should be. But seeing the shift of the the Dragons of going from where they were to the second game and where they were. It's like, mm. you know what? A week's a long, well, two weeks is a long time in footy. I'm willing yes. to take a step back and go, you know what? I've still got faith in the Titans. They mm. still can, you know, definitely turn it around, obviously. But I just think two weeks is a long time in footy. If if they come out this week and they play similar to the way they did round one, that'll be really concerning for me because I'll be like, this is a young forward pack that should be responding to Desi. Like it should be responding to Desi. Surely mm. that we're going to see a very amped up Titans this game. Oh, I'd like to think so. Oh. You'd be concerned if you don't. Yeah. Particularly with their first up uh, showing against the Dragons. Um, they are outsiders, Kempi. Wow. So, the, yeah, the punters have got uh, got the doggies as favourites. Slight favourites, I should say. Dollar eighty to 205, the Titans. So it's a close match, but... Um, yeah, I, I just see value in in Foran coming back. Mm. I just think that he's he's the he's the steady hand that the Titans need. Um, mm. They got a lot of youth. Uh, you know, you just mentioned that they got a young forward pack. They got some younger guys out in the outside backs too, which you know have enthusiasm, um, which they need to the younger guys. But Kieran, with all of his experience, just has he just knows when to pull the strings, knows when to pull the trigger on certain plays, knows when to settle everyone down and just say, hey, boys, let's make our tackles, get through our sets. Um, I think he may be the difference in this one. And with the Bulldogs, what – yeah, you're, you, you mentioned it in regards mm-hmm. to the fact they're struggling to score points. And I, you know, on my podcast on Monday, I said that, you know, the concern for them was is that when you can't score points, you can't put scoreboard pressure on teams. And so yeah. you look at the Sharkies' game plan, they were so patient. They just they just believed 
that if they yep. just kept doing certain things, eventually the cracks would open. Whereas if you're a team that can put points on, you put pressure on that patience and you say, are you sure you want to be that patience? You're now you're six yeah. behind, you're 12 behind. Yeah. And, and so how do you think that the Bulldogs address that? Well, they just, oh well, man, they got to back themselves really, mm. don't they? Like you, you, you can't think, well, I, I put it this way. If you, if you think scoring one try or two tries is going to get you a win, then you better have the best defense in the comp. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a different story if different story if you if you're talking Penrith right and they because they have won games off scoring two tries, three tries max and still defending their try line mm. and keeping the opposition you know under those two or three tries that they've scored. So, but the the doggies they're not there yet. Mm. Okay, they're not the best defensive team in the competition, hence why they're not sitting at the top of the ladder. So, that's my point. If you either got to Defend. You either got to be the best defensive side in the comp when you're only scoring one or two tries a game, or you need to address your attack and say, "Hey, boys, where are we going to find our points?" Yeah, because you have to score them to win. Yeah, no secret there, mate. You know what I mean? So, mm. and and particularly in the modern game, like if if you can't score more than a try, then you're probably not going to be in the match. Yeah. <laughs> With your six agains, the speed of the game, the yeah. way things open yep. up, momentum. Yep. Uh, we're going to head to a break. After the break, we're going to preview Dragons v. Cowboys. Welcome back to the Captain's Run. Let's get straight into it. Dragons v. the Cowboys. Saturday, 5.30 New South Wales time, 4.30 Queensland time, Jubilee Stadium. Debella moves to prop for the suspended Francis Molo. Late Lua promoted to the starting side. Marshke makes his NRL debut at hooker in place of little concussion. Back row up, Lukey set to miss six weeks. Poor fella, cannot catch a break. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Finny Fuiaki, Finny Fuiaki joins the starting side. Jack Jazeski is uh, the yep. new face on the bench. Smitty, I mean, let's talk about Dragons initially. Mm. Wow. If you ever wanted to know if rugby league's a roller coaster, oh, oh man, what are your thoughts, mate? Um, yeah, oh, incredible. They just they they looked like a completely different footy side, didn't they? Yeah. From when they played Titans to uh, Dolphins, and I tipped. I tipped the Dragons round two, but uh, he he suckered us, he suckered us in. Yeah, Wayne, he got us a beauty. I know we're getting off the game that we're talking about here, but so we'll get to Dolphins later. But great turnaround for the Dolphins against the Dragons. They just they they never looked in the match though. Dragons mm. never looked like likely to score a point, and they didn't look like they were ever going to win the match. It just it went from bad to worse for them on the weekend. And I tell you what, they're going to have to aim up real quick. Um, because they've got one of the hottest teams in the comp right now. I think the Cowboys have scored the most points. Just talking about scoring points um, regarding with the Bulldogs, the Cowboys have scored more points than any other team in the comp. They've scored 64 points in the first two rounds. Wow. So they are a lethal footy side. Mm. As in, you invite them down to your end, more more than likely they're going to walk away with points. Yeah. Unless you're prepared to aim up on your try line. Unless you're prepared to aim up on your trial line. Now, now the Dragons did that in round one, but they didn't in round two. Mm. They didn't. They it, it was like they just, I don't know. I don't know what it was. They just, they they were, the, as I said before, they were a completely different footy side to what they showed us against the Titans. Whether they were prepared to roll the sleeves up, aim up against um, Dolphins, whether Dolphins just too good for them with their structures and their attack. And I know, you know, the hammer had a massive game, but you know, like how did that change so quickly in, in a week's time? Um, Cowboys, you know, very good. I know they snuck away with a victory, but they are showing signs of going back to that form that they showed us what a couple of years ago can be 2022, yeah. where they got all the way to a prelim final, um, nearly got to the big one. So I'm, I'm going Cowboys this one. Yeah, I'm going Cowboys as well. Uh, they look they were a little bit scrappy first half, uh, but the fact that they were, you know, can just pile points on you. To be honest, it's a little bit like Broncos last year, where you'd you'd, you'd get half a game going, oh, what's going on here, and then they just just absolutely yeah. smash you with points. Uh, yeah. In regards to the Dragons, I mean, I'm at a loss for words. I really am. I I cannot believe the turnaround of essentially playing top eight footy round one where you go, mm-hmm. this Dragon side genuinely could contest for round one to one of their worst performances in, in years. Like, it genuinely, 
I, I'm shocked at the turnaround. I just can't for the life of me understand what it could be because it can't be complacency. I mean, you, you have one... Not good, in round two. No, there's no way. Is it? <laughs> is it training? Is it, you know, were they fatigued? Is it... Keep, oh, mate, for the life of me, I can't explain it. Yeah. Uh, if you're the Dragons, I guess I, I, the most I feel sorry for is Dragons fans because you saw the celebration of their round one performance and they haven't had much to cheer for for a while now and they were no. so happy. And and then, look, if they go up to the Dolphins and they lose 24-12, that's all good. They, they go up there, it's, it's yep. an away game. The Dolphins, they want to bounce back themselves. But it's just the way they lost that I think that has shocked a lot mm. of Dragons fans back into, oh, okay. Because the problem now for the Dragons is is that performance, the set round two, has completely erased round one. Yeah. So you can't even look to that and go, mate, look how good we were round one. We've got – it's it's gone. Yep. I'll tell you where they went wrong, mate. 13 errors. Oh. 13 errors is where they went wrong compared to the Dolphins five. So that that's just – like you cannot compete. Mm. You just cannot compete with anyone in their comp. If you want to double, well, they've almost tripled the opposition's error rate. You know what yeah. I mean? When you're turning over that much football and you're making more tackles than the opposition, at some stage you're going to get caught out. Mm. And, you know, so what was it, 38 blot? 38 blot. Wow. You Far know, out. So, bit of work to do for the drags. I think maybe Cowboys too strong, though. Yeah, agreed. Now, Tigers take on the Sharkies Saturday, 7.35. 6.35 Queensland time at Leichhardt Oval. Team news. Olam is good to go after recovering from a knee injury. He joins last week's debutant. Fatape in the centres with Stafford Toa, set to miss eight weeks uh, after undergoing ankle injury. Caesar promoted to the starting side in seven with Sullivan shifted to 14. Bolle is named at centre with Safarth moving to the interchange. Shark team news. Nikora, uh, Nikora suspension sees Jack Williams moving to the starting side. Hunt returns after missing last week's game due to a virus, joins the bench. Billy Burns comes in the interchange. For uh, Hal Tapua and is set to make his club debut. How do you see this one, Smithy? I think Sharkies. Yeah, Sharkies. They're playing a pretty good style of footy at the moment. Very direct. And they look really certain of what they're doing, particularly with the footy. Um, this was after, what was it? Was this our first show? I said they might. <laughs> I said they'll, they'll slide out of the eight. Yeah. They must have been listening. Oh, absolutely. Fitzy. Fitzy's um, given them the audio and said, here, boys, fire up. Absolutely. Smithy's, Smithy's ripped us. <laughs> um, no, like well, I think um, well done to the to the Sharkies. They've uh, they've played really well first couple of rounds, and they've got to take some positive um, feelings into this match as well against the Tigers. Justin Olam, big juzzy. Um, back into the, the, the centres. Aiden Caesar as well, been uh, moved up to number seven. Does that change the way they play? Um, experienced player, of course. Um, that, we, we've seen the Tigers against the Raiders. They made some fundamental errors, right, mm. on the weekend. They were in some pretty good attacking positions on the weekend and just they almost – they just turned the ball over. Unforced errors. They just turned it over without really troubling the Raiders too much. But um, maybe those more experienced players, they – add a bit of um, depth and um, bring a bit of experience to those younger guys around them. I just think on a whole, though, um, taking on the Sharks at the moment, with the form they're in, even though um, Nicker is suspended, one of the best back rows in the comp at the moment, um, Britain uh, Nicker. But, uh, yeah, Sharky's too strong for mine. The, the really uh, exciting thing for Sharky's fans is their game plan is relatively simple and yeah. – so when you, you're getting victories with a relative simple game plan, the good thing is later on in the year, if you if you go through a bit of a form slump, you're always going to have that blueprint there to fall back on and go, okay, boys, let's let's just let's simplify things, go back to what worked for us. Whereas, you know, some of the, some other teams where they might get scrappy wins where a game plan isn't really executed, sometimes when you're looking for answers, it's very hard to find that obvious answer. Um, I will say as well, the Sharkies, they, they looked... To a degree, in the first year under Fitzgibbon, they look like a Craig Fitz, Fitzgibbon side. Last year, a lot of the time, I was like, this doesn't look like a Craig Fitzgibbon side. This year is the most, I believe, they look like a genuine... If there is a an expression of Fitzgibbon as a player, it's the way the Sharkies are playing at the moment. Mm. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm a big fan, mate. I like them. I like the way that they've approached this year. I think they would have been disappointed with the way they exited the comp the last two. 
and they're putting into practice what they've what they've trained for all preseason. Like you said, simple, straightforward footy, particularly in these early rounds, banking wins. Perfect way to approach it. And just quickly, before we head to the break, the Tigers, uh, it's just that first 20 they've got to sort out. Yeah. You know, that yeah. first 20 minutes, they got blown off the park. And I'm willing to give them a pass by the fact that that was their round one game, whereas the Raiders yes. had already played. Yeah. And so I think that I'm going to be able to judge them a bit more by the fact that, okay, they got shocked. Then they fought yep. their way back into the match. Let's yep. see how they go first 20 against the Sharkies, who have been outstanding. Uh, we're outstanding last week in the first 20. We're going to head to a break. After the break, we've got Eels versus Seagulls. You know, when you look at the bookies, it's tight as anything. Mm. Eels, mm-hmm. although unlucky, you're not unlucky, but they lost last week. Were really good round one. Seagulls, they have been absolutely flying. Morgan Harper moves to the wing to cover for Bailey Simonson with Blaze Talangi. Uh, Talangi, hopefully I'm saying that right, coming to the centres for his NRL debut. Uh, Kelma Tualangi has been named on the bench despite suffering a shoulder injury against the Panthers. Regan Campbell Gillard set for his 200th game. Tommy Talao was listed among the reserves after suffering an ankle injury against the Roosters with uh, Vega named to start. How do you see this one playing out, Smithy? Uh, great game. Great game to kick off uh, Sunday Arvo football. A couple of good matches, actually, Sunday Arvo, which is uh, great to see. Eels, as you mentioned, mate, they've uh, they've had a pretty good start to the season. Um, took it to Penrith um, last week, but fell short. Uh, I think they're they're well and truly in this, mate. Well and truly in this. Well done. Quick congratulations to Big Reggie, uh, Regan Campbell Gillard for reaching 200. Much like Jared Warrior Hargreaves uh, played it played up front all of his career. Played Test footy. Played Origins. 200 games in the middle. Big effort by the big man. So I hope it all goes well for you. But Manly. Wow, they've been good. They've, they've, they, they are looking good. Many saying, many saying that they are the form team of the comp. Kempi, yeah, had a big win um, over in in Vegas, of course. Had the week off, come back, and then got it done in round two as well. They'll, I'll tell you what, they'll they'll be feeling extremely confident to take on Parramatta. I just feel Parramatta at home uh, be too a little bit too strong for Manly. Yeah, I'm too, too, too strong for them. Yeah, I've tipped Eels at home, but I tell you what, it was not an e- easy decision. I just, I this is flip a coin type of stuff. What I love mm-hmm. the most about Seagulls' win last week, you know, we know DCE incredible, we know Tom Travojevic incredible, but what I loved about it was their forward pack dominated the Roosters' forward pack because yeah. the only questions I well, the, sorry, I had three questions heading into uh, the season for the Manly. Mm-hmm. I basically had can Tommy stay fit. He looks good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can Luke Brooks bounce back? He looks good. But mm-hmm. the main question was, can that forward pack go with the top-tier forward packs? Because outside of Olakowatu and Jake Trevojevic, you could argue they're a little, they're a tier below. Now, mm-hmm. after their performance against the Roosters, they look like they could match it with the best of them. Yeah. Just quietly, is Olakowatu the best back row in the comp at the moment? A hundred percent. Like, I think so. He, I mean... Him and Hosking, you could you could argue Hosking, but I, I, at the moment, Olakowatu is is what I'd go just with past uh, form. Yeah, so I'm not like I don't see the write ups in the papers down in Sydney because they they talk Origin teams every week, don't they? New South Wales, they pick a team every week. Is well, that I, right? Like I'm running. I'm guilty. I'm guilty of it. Oh, you uh, you, you know, name one, do you? <laughs> you know what? I I do it, Smithy. I do it to perpetuate the the struggle of picking the right team. So I'm actually a sleeper. Inside New South right. Wales, trying to just you know muddy the waters a little bit. Gotcha. Yeah, but but this man is surely, oh. surely he's got a blue jersey on his back at the moment, mate. I mean, if you're going to pick the blues jersey this week, you'd be picking yep. him starting on the edge with probably Martin on the other edge, and then maybe Murray in the, the at thirteen with Yo. Even yep. though Yo's been incredible, but Murray at thirteen in Origin has also been outstanding. Yeah. Um, like, like his numbers though, like last oh. week, like his number, like seventeen runs, one for one hundred and sixty-two meters, six tackle breaks, <laughs> and on top of that, he's made twenty-two tackles in a winning side. Mate, you know what I mean? Seriously, like, unbelievable. I, and and I, I, we always say, you know, you select players other teams don't want to play against. Mm. Olakowatu oh, is the guy yeah. you don't Yucky. want to play against. <laughs> uh, okay, Knights v Storm, Coggart, new halfback. We've been through that. Braley, obviously back. Uh, Tuala from quad, in- quad injury on the wing to fill the void left by Marja, who is also out, uh, set to undergo surgery four to six weeks out. 
Hugh suspended. What a joke that is. Tyron Wishart oh. moves to the bench to halfback. Bradley joins the interchange. Munster still sidelined. Welsh is sidelined also after suffering a HIA. Uh, uh, Mayorda joins the bench. How do you see this one playing out, Smithy? Um, this is going to be a really tough one. Mm. Tough game for Storm, considering Jerome Hughes is out. As you said, what a G up. I can't believe he was suspended. Oh my God. Given some of the things we've seen across the weekend, which made it across the match review committee's desk and they only ended up being a fine. And Jerome Hughes gets a week for just really defending his try line and the referee getting in the way. Anyway, that's done and dusted. He's not playing, so we need to worry about who is playing. And that is Tyron Wishart. He's coming into the halves. He's going to partner Jonah Pezzett. Big game for those two boys. Mm. Huge game. Now, you'd imagine Harry Grant um, in that spine and Ryan Pappenhausen also, the one and nine, stepping up and taking a bit more um, of having a bit more influence on how this team's run. Um, really important. It just doesn't detract from the great things that they're doing currently in the first couple of weeks. As in, it's they don't want to try and overplay their hand, but if they can get in there and be a little bit more vocal and help out Pezzett and Tyron Wishart, who, you know, they're great players in their own right. Two young men, you know, Tyron Wishart, he's a, he's a great utility to have. Fills a, fills a lot of voids in multiple positions, and Jonah Pezzett has started the season extremely well in place of Cam Munster, but they are inexperienced. And it can be a little bit daunting at time thinking, well, us two young fellas running this team. So I'd expect Pappenhausen and Grant to step up a little bit there. It's traditionally been a hard place to win games for the Storm, Kempi. Yeah. Newcastle. Newcastle just seemed to lift. And if there's any time that they're going to lift, it's going to be this week. Yeah. It's oh. going to be this week, mate, off off, off the um, result last week. You know, just fell short to the Cows. Lost round one against Canberra at home. It's a proud footy town and their team, uh, sorry, their fans, they're going to turn out in droves for this one. They'll expect a good showing against Melbourne.